Pascal Carnes, thank you so much for joining The Truman Files. You're welcome. So you are a lobbyist. Yes, I am. What exactly does it mean to be a lobbyist? Does it mean that you uh, track down decision makers in a lobby? <laughs> Not really, no. Lobbying is to represent the interest of the people who are working, you're working for. Mm -hmm. So it's about talking to politicians, talking to decision makers, talking to officials, uh, different uh, level of people, so that we can bring uh, our input to these people. Why isn't it called an inputist then? It's a good question. Well, one of the reasons is um, the beginning of, of the world came in the United States with at the time of President Newly Grant. His wife didn't like him to smoke cigar. It does stink. It stink, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he went to uh, the, the Hotel Willett, mm -hmm. uh, just across the, the White House in Washington, and then people were waiting in the lobby to have access to him and pass some messages. And at, at a point in time, it was so many of them that he, uh, Yuli Grand, president, said, I'm just fed up of these lobbyists. Why is lobbying considered to be a bit of a dirty word? It is true that some bad examples have taken place, and, and, and lobby has been pictured together with b the bad example. So you're just misunderstood? I think we are. Like the ending of Game of Thrones? Yes, exactly. Or vegans? Or vegans. <laughs> yeah. They're not all judgy. Some of them are OK. No, no, but the, some lobbyists are also OK. <laughs> some lobbyists are also OK. <laughs> what, what do you think makes a good lobbyist? Well, you need to be honest. You need to be co coherent to say, OK, these guys is important to listen to if we want to re legislate on that area. What are some of the ways that you would lobby a decision maker? The most efficient way we do is to build a position paper. What's a position paper? Position paper is a kind of a report that we will hand to the official in the commission, to the minister in the member states, to the member of the European Parliament. So you're giving them a cheat sheet on how to make you guys happy, right? Yeah, you can say that. I mean, I, I would say rather I'm a good student handing my final report of the year. But if you're just providing information, I mean, can't ChatGPT do that now with you and you have less work to do? You can chill in your office and uh, the robot can just uh, send the decision makers their information? Um, I think lobbying is essentially about human beings talking to each other. So it's closer to dating then? It's closer to networking. Well, isn't networking just uh, being charming like a good date? Possibly, possibly, but maybe not looking for the same purpose. <laughs> you want them to say another kind of yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the role of money when it comes to lobbying? The, the money is to pay the lobbyist. Uh, there is no exchange of um, luggage uh, full of, of cash. That doesn't exist. You don't have any suitcases hidden no. somewhere? But in the private sector, there's a lot of money. So can't you throw money in other ways? It is true. that There is a lot of money into lobbying, but not in the way people believe. The money that is there is actually to pay the lobbyist. Uh, maybe eventually we, we are for sp sponsoring mm -hmm. uh, for events. Mm -hmm. And merch. Event. Merchandising, yes. <laughs> so aside from merchandising and throwing some money at events, you don't think that you have, uh, that money has that much of a role to play in? Uh, it's in not that I think. I am absolutely sure. OK. And, and my budget is only 250,000 euros, so it's not a big one. Well, that sounds like a house. <laughs> Small house. Can you tell me a little more about how the, the, average, um, the average citizen can rest assured that what you're doing is completely legal and above board? Well, there, um, there is a transparency register which the European institutions have created. Uh, first, um, the European Commission, and then there is another one for the European Parliament. So there are some transparency registers in some of the member states. There's different transparency registers for each institution? Yeah. Well, that sounds like a waste of time. But in this transparency, transparency register, we, re, we, we declare everything, the, the name of, of, of the managing director, the name of the president. Uh, we put the, the budget that we have, uh, who are, are the members, uh, what, what do we do, how do we work. And we sign on the code uh, of transparency to say that we accept this code. So you, you are in the transparency register, and then you request a meeting, and it's OK because you're registered, and they know that the meeting um, will take place, has taken place, right? Yes. And, and if you want to get a badge to go to the European Parliament, you need to be in the transparency register. And uh, if, you want to re if you request a meeting in the European Commission, depending on the level, uh, you would need to, to, to know that the meeting is going to be published, and everybody would know that 
that you are going to meet to meet this uh, commissioner for instance. Okay, so you can't just rock up at the commission and uh, demand a meeting. You have to be invited in, right? Yeah, somewhere. Okay, so it's like being a vampire. You've got to be invited inside the institution. <laughs> yes, yes. Are you sure that you guys are yes, all the good guys? Yes, and then we set. <laughs> okay. So let's say I have a problem with a European law. Can I just afford you then? Will you take me on pro bono? Well, you cannot recruit me because I have a dedicated role to the European Services Forum. What you could try to do is actually hire a lawyer. And one, will one lawyer do the job? Probably not. It will have to be sure that someone else will be going in the same direction. So if you want to have, if you have a problem, you think that many of the other people will have the same problem than you, you just create an association. Oh God, that sounds like a but lot of know. work. So Pascal, do you think that uh, lobbying has a bright future ahead of it in Brussels? Yes, I think uh, the need for input from the industry and the need from the industry to bring down the information is a good future. Regulation is going to always come in here or from here and therefore we will need to have a good uh, lobby uh, uh, organizations around it to spread out the information. So you want to be uh, seen as kind of the, the cool kids, right? Yes, we are. You are? Yes. <laughs> I think that cool people don't have to say that they're cool though. Okay, I don't say it. Okay, cool. Well, Pascal, this was great. Thank you so much for sitting with the Schumann Files. My pleasure.